Hello everybody and welcome to my second Magicka Nightblade build video for the recent patch. Now this is going to be for people who are not an Argonian. If I had to choose between this and my previous build, I would take the Argonian any day. That build is extremely nasty, but as it goes for a non-Argonian, this is going to be best for any Bretons or any High Elves. This will do you perfectly on either race. If you are a Dark Elf, you're probably fine as well. You're just going to have slightly lower stats overall than the High Elf. High Elf slightly better. Oh my god, I just sold a lot. Can't complain with that, I suppose. Okay, so starting things off with the build, guys. We are using, well, let's start with stats. Oh, let's start with sets. Our sets are as follows. Five New Moon Acolyte in heavy on the front bar. Now, I quickly want to clarify that the vast majority of this build is from a friend of mine, Hirsia. Um, he has also released on his channel, but I'm sure he won't have a problem with me showing the same sort of build. There are some changes on here a little bit in terms of CP especially. Either way, I think this is as good as it gets for a non-Argonian match play. So I'd be lying to you if I made any other build. So Newman on the front bar, this is going to amp our spell damage up. It's going to increase the costs on our front bar as well. But fortunately for us, we've got a free cast, a fairly cheap, a okay cost, a fairly cheap, and one expensive skill that we're not going to cast that often. So it doesn't matter too much, which allows us to then run six Warlock on the back bar, much like our Argonian, to keep four pieces on the front bar. The reason we go for six is that, first of all, we keep the four-piece front bar, and secondly, we can run this bad boy. Malakath, pay to win, ring. So good, undeniably the best in slot. If you can get it, you do get it. Now, if you can't get the Malakath ring, you can still run this build. All you're gonna wanna run is five Warlock on the back bar. You'll lose the four-piece on your front bar. You'll still maintain Warlock for sustain, and then you'll be able to run two Willpower or two Potentate as you prefer. Either is fine, I'd probably run Willpower, but you could run Potentate. Either's good. If you do only have Lich, you could use that instead of Warlock. It is definitely going to be worse, especially in Heavy, but it is a viable option. Last but not least is your monster set. This is going to be Malibeth for me. I think that the heal on this is very nice when you get any melee target on you and really helps you, much like the Argonian, deal with, with that high level of pressure. Having that vitality is huge, but pretty much any monster set could be used here. This really comes down to your preference. You can run Kajalne for more damage. You run Engine Guardian for sustain. I wouldn't run Pirate. You don't want to lose any more healing. Um, but it's very much a flexible spot. Run what you personally prefer. You could use anything here. All of my traits are currently in pen. Again, I'm going to be making a video later on about researching traits. I think you probably want to run too well fitted, but that's just an estimation. I will do another video later on about traits. Perfect. Now, every single piece of this should be triglyph. At the moment, my sash and gloves aren't. That's simply because I've borrowed them off my Argonian. To save after change the glyphs, but you do want to try glyph them all, and all jewelry is try glyph because we want this big high health pool to minimize the chance of being bursted to increase the heal of our dark cloak because this is not an invisible cloak build. Last but not least, our glyphs we are running one triune recovery enchant. This uses the new rune indico and it's going to help us get that little bit of stamina recovery, and the health recovery works well with the heavy passives, it gives us the overall extra benefit. Our second one is purely magic recovery. To be honest, if you're over sustaining, you could even run a triglyph here as well. And last but not least, one spell damage just to top it all off. The glyphs on our weapons are going to be an infused shock on the front bar, and the back bar should be an infused weapon damage and spell damage. But again, I've stolen this off my Argonian build, and on my Argonian build, powered is going to be the rest in the slot. So change this trait as you like. Powered is not terrible here, but it's not going to be perfect because you're not going to have as big a heal base. Our stats then, for those who are interested, totally unbuffed is 37.5k Magicka, an enormous health pool, an enormous stamina pool, and then we are 2.2k unbuffed spell damage, which means with the weapon damage, we're hitting about 3.5 after buff. Magic recovery is in at 1.56 unbuffed, but we've obviously got Warlock behind that, which is the same as having Lich plus a little bit more, which is going to amp us up. And because our race is currently a Breton, we have the reduced cost necessary to sustain heavy. If you're a high elf, the only change you'll need to make is you want to change this spell damage glyph to a reduced cost glyph. Nothing else needs to change. That will put you on the same level of sustain, minus 100 recovery, and that recovery will be fine. You're going to still be able to sustain that in my view. Our Munus is the mage. If you truly can't sustain, you could definitely go for Atronach here. I run a little lower sustain on a magic blade than most, so by all means, change that to Atronach, you'll be fine. If you do change that to Atronach, however, I strongly advise making this a triad recovery enchant because you'll definitely be over-sustaining at that point. 
Our skills are as follows, a very generic skill bar, entropy on the front bar for a major sorcery. You could source that on a pot. I don't think it's worth it here because our stamina sustain is only being sustained by our pot and the base recovery from this one glyph. So tripod is pretty important. So in that case, I would go for generation. And then we're gonna run Sw Swallow Salt as our base spammable, Elemental Drain for Minor Breach and Magic is Still, Merciless for our main burst combo, and Fear just before that. You want to cast your Swallow Salt Weave into the Merciless combo, Fear with it, Soul Harvest after your Fear or before your Fear, and then Merciless. You need to mix that up. The obvious combo is to go for a Soul Harvest into a Fear into a Merciless, but a good player is gonna predict that. Sometimes it is worth, for example, Fear, Soul Harvest, Wait, Merciless. Sometimes it is worth to Soul Harvest, Fear, don't hit the next cast, just funnel, it will get dodged, and then Merciless. It really depends on the target and you have to be situationally aware of how to deal with that. On the back bar, we are using Shadow Image. This is for my main. The teleport is the most important part, however, and this is gonna be our main kite skill. Absolutely essential to use this. You do not have a burst heal. So you need to keep this at range of you at all times. Your healing on this is much less than in my Argonia build. You cannot face tank always. If you really dislike the skill, and I know there are people who aren't good with it, you could run a base heal. And if I was gonna run a base heal, I would be running heal world potentially, um, but I would much prefer to run Shadow Image. Definitely, hands down. Second skill is Rapid Regen. Nice, juicy hot on this. It is going to be absolutely mandatory. And Race Against Time is going to give us our Snare Remove. We do not have one otherwise. More importantly, it's going to give us Major Expedition. Now, we do need sources somewhere. It's very useful on a Magic Blade because Kiting is your best defense. The crit damage obviously goes to Waste, which is a bit of a shame and a weakness compared to the Argonian build. But we need it all the same. We need that Snare Remove. We need the Expedition. Dark Cloak is going to give us a secondary heal. Massive hot on that because of the size of our health. And last but not least is Cycling Attacks for yet another hot and some sustain. Finally, we are using the Life Giver Morph of the Restoration Staff, and that is going to increase your heal. There are rumors that you need to have this skill and this skill unlocked. If so, unlock them. I truly don't know if you do. Um, I'm pretty sure you don't. You can actually check that right now. You don't need the skills unlocked. I don't have them unlocked, and I got my heal ward. So you find about this skills unlocked. You can save the skill points if you so wish. Our food is going to be Bewitched Sugar Skulls. I'm currently a vampire. You do not want to be a vampire in this build. In my view, you are going to lose out using this. I don't think you gain too much um, overall. I, I do not think it's worth it on this build. I'm only a vampire because I'm soon going to be running a melee-based Magic Blade build for my third Magic Blade build video, but that'll be after Magic Templar. And last but not least, I think we only have CP left. Oh, well, I've already said the potions. That's going to be tripod, but yeah. So last but not least is your CP. Fairly generic here. 66 in Warlock for your reduced cost. You could put some in Sprinter. It can be useful. I'm currently stacking them around here. 75 Arcanist, 27 in Mukalf, and 7 in Healthy. 35 in Befoul to really amp up the size of our Soul Harvest to file. This is really noticeable, especially in this patch. But by all means, if you do want to get points into Sprinter, which is well worth it if you're kiting a lot, take them out of here, drop the foul down to 16, I believe is the next scaling point. I would double check that in my Argonian build just to be sure and mimic my Argonian screen CP because it's going to work exactly the same. 40 in Tubbic for Roll Dodge, 20 in Shadow Ward for Block. We're really rarely blocking, but if we do block, we might as well get this cost nice and cheap. We've got the points to burn. In the blue tree, this is a far stronger set. 37 in Blessed for Healing, 40 in Elkhorn for Crit. Now, you could drop this to 28 and move those points elsewhere. I haven't quite decided whether I'm gonna do that yet on this build. Um, in the end, I'm mostly playing this build in no CP, so it doesn't worry me too much, but it's probably worth putting Elkhorn to 28 and moving those points into Pen, Amethyst, Expert, Light Attack, that sort of stuff. The reason those are still worth it, even though we can't crit damage, is the crit heal is still really, really relevant. And we are still running because of an Argonium with, uh, sorry, as a Nightblade, we've still got a decent crit chance. We're gonna be sitting around 30%, which in heavy is not bad at all. And so we, these crit heals are very noticeable on the amount of healing we're getting, and it's really gonna change our survivability. 56 in Elemental Expert for your base damage, 56 in Pen, mandatory for both. Nine in a Staff Expert for your Light Attacks, 72 in Master Arms, and we only have one dot, it's not worth the points. Finally, the Red Tree, 72 in Ironclad and 48 in Resistant, 40 in Fixed Skin, 37, 37, and nine and 27. Identical to my Argonian or near as Demet. And I think that covers absolutely everything. Knowing me, I've forgotten something. Wouldn't be the first time, but I hope that helps you out, guys. 
and best of luck with the build video. This is the one you want to run if you're high elf or a Breton. But if I had to pick, I would go for my Argonian build over this. Next build will be the Madplar. That will be coming out in the near future. Um, I've just got a few more things I'd like to test on that.